Hey, it's Jake Mace with phoenixlongevityarts.com and we're here in San Francisco and we're in Golden Gate Park. We just did a really good tour of Golden Gate Park, but also we were in Sonoma County and we were in the Japanese Tea Garden. If you guys come to San Francisco and you're in the Golden Gate Park area, the Japanese Tea Garden was absolutely fantastic and in the future we'll do a video from there, but this time it was just so crowded, but it was so beautiful. I could have stayed there all day long and look, I met a Kung Fu master here, Matthew Lee, in the park. We're going to show you guys some Bagua fighting application for this video today. So I hope you guys have a partner you can practice with, uh, get with your partner, and work on a few of the moves we're going to show you in today's video. You ready? Ready. Let's do it. So the first thing I love to do for Bagua fighting application is very similar to a lot of the traditional masters, how they fight for position, similar to wrestlers, similar to football players. It's called Bagua swimming. And I love it as a two to 10 minute warm up before we do any applications with a partner. So we're always trying to kind of jockey for position. He's getting inside of me, I'm getting inside of him. We're trying to kind of fight each other for position. And we're just kind of getting used to how it feels to be intimate and close with somebody. Because most human beings that start a martial art program have a really uh, hard time getting close. So a lot of wrestlers get super close and they get that cauliflower ear. And luckily I'm with this guy that I really I'm comfortable with this guy. <laughs> so we're circling like Bagua does. We're fighting for position. I'm focusing on keeping my legs in a powerful stance underneath me the whole time. And I think that he's winning right now. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm not gonna win this one. I bit off more than I can chew. After about five minutes, we're good. We can practice some applications. And you'll find if you start this way, You'll be much more comfortable with close quarters during the rest of your training session. I think if you just start plus, doing it, oh good. Plus it also gives you that sensitivity of oh yeah. after you've get thrown a few times or pushed back a few times of or power struck, and weight. you feel like where they're going when they do this movement to yeah. help with your reactions and your structure. It teaches that to you without having to really think about it. It, it integrates it. Or when your own balance is off. Right. Yeah, you'll be able to feel it when the other person is more aligned, rooted, structured, balanced, moving more fluidly, moving more whole. Mm -hmm. And if you get somebody you trust, you can be breathing, doing it as a two-person meditation for 10 minutes. Just don't it let it cross. Like that. And just, just don't let it cross the line into a, into a weird relationshipy kind of <laughs> situation. <laughs> or an angry battle yeah. fight. Is, the, the, is what it always happens, is one yeah. person gets their pride bruised a little bit and then the other person gets a little more aggressive and then it goes back and forth until pretty soon it's no longer friends. And that always <laughs> happens. I mean, give me a comment down below if you guys have ever had a sparring match where anger and ego have become the most uh, apparent thing in the match. I mean, it happens to me all the time, but I try yeah. to find partners who I trust, who are egoless, and who really just want to train and not win. Yeah. That was Cuz like Cuz D'Amato's number one rule in his gym. Who is this? No wars in the gym. Cuz D'Amato, who is Muhammad Ali and uh, 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 Mike Tyson's nice. mentor, right? His coach. So that was his trainer. Number one rule: No wars in the gym. gym. Everybody in the gym is friends. Spar, make each other better, but don't get your pride hurt and get egotistical and emotional about it. What does Mike Tyson and Ali know? <laughs> Just the best ever. <laughs> Just the best ever. <laughs> so once we got this comfort level down, um, how can we include a throw? So yeah, this helps you get the structure and the timing just correct to where you see the opening. And then like one of the throws I do is a simple one. You see it in Bagua a lot. His Bagua Tai Chi, they all have, they have got throws, chinas, strikes, uh, it's all about structure and alignment and how you want to use it. Like, if you're more built for throws, you do the throw kind of application. Okay. Or if the person is more susceptible to throws. So there's yeah. a lot that goes, that's the science of the, of the game. It seems like everyone in Ronda Rousey fights is susceptible to throws. <laughs> right, because she's built for throws too. <laughs> she's built for throws. <laughs> so, so once you get position to do a throw, one of my favorite ones is once I'm in the position right here, where I can capture an arm and get this hand up the chest and slide in just like that. 
and then I'll step around same time. And if my hip is lower than his hip and I'm rooted, I'll bump him off his balance just a little bit. And then as I twist, he goes down super easy. And it's like almost effortless at that point in time. Let's try it again. So I'll kind of do everything at once where I step in and bump. That way, once I start pulling, it's taking him off his center. It's super effortless. That way, even if I was half my size, I could still be throwing. Let's do that once or twice full power. <laughs> awesome. If you guys like seeing me get thrown around in videos like this, <laughs> hit the like button. We'll do more of these. And we like giving you guys little manageable chunks, right? So we have some Bagua swimming and we have a Bagua throw. What uh, Bagua move would this be like in the form? This would be like, uh, a lot of times it's called Dragon Int finds the body. Okay. The, the, if, as you're stepping in and then twisting back to back. So it's getting that hip into the person, getting the hand up and around the head. Yeah. And then twisting. Sounds good. Hey guys, hit the like button for us. Comment down below. I'm sure that Matthew Lee from Tao of Kung Fu will uh, jump in and answer comments. Yeah, he's right. online and I will as well. And share this video, but also check me out on Instagram at Jake Mace Tai Chi and uh, like me on Facebook at Jake Mace dot Tai Chi. Facebook.com slash Jake Mace dot Tai Chi. And Matthew Lee has a, a blog. A blog. Yeah. WordPress page, Tao of Kung Fu at WordPress.com. Nice. I'll put a link on the bottom. I'll see you guys next time. This Golden Gate Park in San Francisco is amazing. Watch this. Check this out. We're just in the middle of the park. I mean, there's a thousand people all around. It's a Monday in San Francisco. And look, we got like fresh blackberries just growing out in the open. Do you know how much I would have to pay for these blackberries in Phoenix? Just fresh blackberries growing. All right, get out of here. I'm gonna be here the rest of the day. I'm gonna get my lunch right now. Look at how many good ones there are. Look at that. Just growing wild in the park. I'm gonna come be just a nomad in San Francisco.